Hello. How are you? <laughs> oh, look at that lovely river. Nice strips of all the water, so we can now get down there and see what treasures we can find. All right, mud lovers, we're at that broken river again. That means that there's extra room to go mudlarking here because all the tide is gone because they're working upstream. I'm with Nick White today. Hello. She, she's the pipe queen and we had to tip off there might be some pipes around here. So together, we're gonna find all sorts of clay pipes and I've got my metal detector as well so we can see if there's any metal artifacts here that have been left behind for over a hundred years or so. Very historic place, so there should be some good finds coming up. Yeah, I'm really hoping to find some local history here. Um, I know that there's a few pipe makers that work specifically in this area, so I'm hoping to find some evidence of that along the banks of this river. Well, together we can get some luck in the mud. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, let's do it. I can hardly wait because I can see lots of pipe stems over there and pipe bowls just, just waiting for me to go over there and examine them. <laughs> there are, Nick. There's hey. two. Uh, I'm not sure if you can make that on camera, but there's two. Two pipes there in the water, one well, there, one there. fancy that. <laughs> Bing. And. Bing. Maybe they're a while, aren't they? They're green on that. Yeah. Very nice. Well, where there's two pipes, there's going to be more. There you go, I haven't got a fines patch today, so you'll have to take them. Thank you. What have you got, Nick? Well, I can see a pipe down here. A little pipe laying under the surface of the stream. Just there, see it? Yeah, we can see it. Here we are, look, looking a little bit green. <laughs> but nothing, there's a little little scrub with a toothbrush won't do, a little blunt toothbrush won't damage it. Good. That's a pipe from what about 1840, 1850, I'd say. Brilliant. Also, what I think. Let's see if there's any more. Yeah, let's do it. My God, I've hardly been walking along for two seconds, literally, and I've just seen a clay pipe down here. Now it takes, I have to tell you, it does take quite a good eye to see what I'm looking at there. Not that I'm blowing my own trumpet or anything, but okay, under here, under this leaf, under this leaf is a pipe. And um, it's definitely got a design on it because I can tell as I run my thumb over it. So, yeah, it's in a bit of a state, it's got something stuck <laughs> on the edge. But let's give it a little rinse and have a look and see. And, and I will probably have to give this one a slightly more sort of... Uh, oh, wow, look at that. Oh, look, that's great, isn't it? You can make out the profile of somebody here, just about. Uh -huh. And just there, you can see Britannia. Beautiful. Yeah, look at that. Oh, well done, Nick. Well, that's uh, hopefully one of many. If it was uh, that well, easy to find one, maybe uh, we'll be able to get a, a nice hoard of pipes today. Well, let's continue as we mean <laughs> to go on. It's a good start, isn't it? It is. I mean, oh, look, there's one above you. I found one. Oh, there. Just there. Got You've got one too. Do you want my, me to get it I've out for you? Pointy stick. <laughs> yeah, I'll point, you pick. <laughs> OK, look, there we go. Let's get this little pipe out. It's been dying to get out into the open air. Okay, all right, this one is a plain one, but okay. it's still a pipe nevertheless. Excellent. One for you, <laughs> one for me. I wonder how long these have been sitting here for. We'll have to uh, do a bit of research and see if we can find out who... Um, who made them. Who made them, exactly. Excellent. Oh, oh my goodness, look, it's a little baby... Look, it looks like a lobster, doesn't it? But it's not. What it's is a, it? It's I like think it's a, a crayfish. A little tiny crayfish. Hello. Wow. Well, we don't want to 
disturbing, but he's a he's a magnificent little beast, isn't he? Yeah, look at that. So oh, he lives underneath here. <laughs> Let's put that back. Do you put that back for me? Could yeah. you just lower the? Uh, yeah, we'll do. I don't want to squash slab. him. Just lower it very carefully. Put, put his go. little um, roof back on. <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting that. No. I've got an idea that these crayfish might be an invasive uh, species. Thank you. Now I think these crayfish might be an invasive species. There's, there's two types of crayfish, I believe. I think one might even be a Chinese crayfish, which are eating the native crayfish, or at least taking over their habitat and stuff. So we're not going to, you know, we're not going to assume anything and just leave it where it is. But it would be interesting to know that maybe some of these crayfish shouldn't really be here. But it's not for us to really start uh, executing crayfish on the no, no, on the, on the it, it doesn't know that it's an invasive species, does it? No, exactly. No, but I could be completely wrong. But um, if I'm right, then that's good. <laughs> I remembered something. Anyway, back to the mudlarking. Yeah. Is that the remains of a purse down there? Oh, well spotted. I mean, it's probably extremely bad remains of a purse. Oh wow, Nick's found a purse. I found a purse. Um, you know, my dream is one day to find a purse bulging with coins, preferably old gold ones. Yeah. Um, we're working on it. It's not going to happen today, but it is an old purse. Look. It is. It's, it's, it's an old purse. It's a very old purse. I wonder if there's any coins that have fallen out nearby. Yeah. Well, what's this? Oh, there's a key. There's a key, which Ooh. might have come out of it, look. That's all right. <laughs> there's the key. So, um, yeah, I wonder if there are any old coins near it. See, I mean, there's so many things that just lie on the bottom of rivers because it just seems that everybody likes to throw junk in rivers. And now when the river is low, look, there's a padlock over there as well. See, with the key on it. So people just love to toss everything in a river, don't they? <laughs> modern plastic one but I don't think it is I think it's quite got a bit of age to it I think <laughs> I mean you know it's not medieval but look at that it's really gorgeous let me give him a little rinse off yeah. I mean, he's going to be a perfect addition for the Thames Tideline orphanage but although it's not the Thames look at that tweet 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 I think she's officially <laughs> quackers <laughs> That's cool. Well, at least we're getting a bit of plastic out of the river. We're doing our bit for the environment. That's not going to break down and get into the waterways, is it? I quite like that, I have to say. Cool. And here we have a broken cod bottle. That's got some um, embossing on it. That's quite nice. What does it say there? Stansfield Brothers. Trademark. Uh, Ripple Stansfield Brothers Ripley. Oh, that'd be a nice upcycler. Take a bit to clean it, but that'll look lovely when it's all clean. Let's get some muck out. Here is the cut down bottle and upcycled. Not bad, eh? Keep an eye on my Etsy store because very often I put these for sale on there. The link is in the description below. Stansfield brothers were Arthur, Albert and Abraham and they produced mineral water in the town of Ripley in Surrey. All I can find out about them is that Arthur left the business in 1873, maybe due to money problems and Albert and Abraham continued without him.
Well guys, I've just found, as you saw, these uh, this Pepsi bottle here, which uh, I found one before, but I can't find another one like it. It's so bizarre because these, these ones are really rare, believe it or not. Um, and they're a beautiful design, they've got the Pepsi cap there. So that's really cool, I've got another one for my collection. And also this came up as you saw, and this is a lovely bottle. Look at the bubbles in that, unless that's the sand. That could be the sand. That is the sand, but still there's a uh, lovely street marks. And look how crude that is. That's Victorian easily. I love the, the nick on that as well, hand blown. Um, yeah, lovely color on that as well. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, I think it's time for a little cup of tea, don't you? Oh, I would love one. <laughs> Is that a kiddie's toy, do you think? Yeah, I don't know. It's a um, very quaint little teapot. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe it's a, yeah, it's a teapot, isn't it? Yeah, Just probably a little perfect child. size for a cup of tea for one. Oh, fine. I'll, go, maybe a quarter I'll go and find my own one then. <laughs> seen um, what looks like could be some form of lamp down here lodged under this wood and I want to have a look and put it out and if it's an old lamp I shall give it to Cy Fines to do some of his upcycling magic. Oh, so I, I, I have to do the cleaning for you do I? Oh, oh no I'll, I'll clean it off I'll clean the <laughs> algae off but look here you see it's got like it's got like a hinge and I'm wondering if it's an old lamp or something Oh, it is! Oh, wow. oh my gosh! Ooh, Look! Wow. That is oh, a brilliant find. Blimey, Riley! Look at that! Thanks, Nick. You've actually <laughs> given that to me already, haven't you? I certainly have. <laughs> I'm a woman of my word, and I think there's no better person to do the upcycling <laughs> than my mate Cy. Look, he's got masthead there. Oh, probably starboard. Oh my yeah, god! Starboard. You are going to do such a fantastic job ooh, of this. Ooh, 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 <gasps> oh, ooh. oh my god! Is, is a crayfish yeah, stuck up, stuck inside oh, it? No. Put it. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is back. <laughs> I'm sorry for everybody who doesn't like it when I make little crustaceans <laughs> homeless, but no, this is going to look really great. I think Sai's going to do a fab job of this. Well, it's brass, hopefully, so uh, it should clean up pretty well. Look. That is a beauty. Look at that. Oh, wow. What we need some, is some glass in there as well. I wonder if the glass is still around. Oh, fantastic. I can't wait to see what you do with that. That is so cool. No, I, that, that was better than I thought it was going to be <laughs> when I pulled it out from under that um, wood. Fantastic. Okay. Well done, Nick. That's a super find. It's got any Rolex. Surely not. Did you say Rolex? Yeah. Oh, flip. Rolex watch, but there's no chance that's real. Rolling. Look, this is lovely. Look at that. Oh, that's probably part of the yeah. lamp. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, it is. It's come outside. Oh, well done. It? Oh, flip. I found, that, is a... Ooh, that is such a beautiful <laughs> colour. Change your mind. <laughs> no. It's nice, though. Look well, at that. Put Perfect. it on the... So that fits. So this little bit here fits in the side of the lamp. Well, let's, uh, let's reconnect it. That's what I said. There might be some glass here. Look. So that goes in the side there. Let's nice. See. Yeah. So that goes in there like that. Yeah. Perfect. Well, there's another one probably down here somewhere as well. I reckon so. That whole thing fell off and just shattered probably when it hit the uh, yeah. hit the ground. It must be it must be in here. It's just we we'll have to come back later when the when the mud has settled, you know, because we'll probably see it then. Yeah. We don't guess what. We'll get some stuff out of the way now and then. <laughs> Shot glass. Oh, what's this? <clears throat> oh, oh, look! <laughs> it's a little, I'm going to keep that. It's a little truck. Brilliant. <laughs> Nicola Especially White, the... Tideline Art, hired for river cleanups. Yeah. I suppose we better be careful don't step on it. Yeah, I know. There's loads of glasses in here though. That's the trouble. It's a bit of luck, isn't it? As soon as you start moving stuff. You know, yeah, then it just um, makes a mess, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I have found a little... Uh, Oh, nice little too. mug, nice little mug. You can have your coffee of that tomorrow morning. Let me just dive in here and see if we can make a mess of everything. Oh, that's a pint glass. I don't really want to um, 
put my hand on a big lobster. We clear a few of the big things out of the way, then we can. Uh, yeah. Come back later. Pipe behind there, so pipe bowl. I don't know if there might be a bit of pipe stem on behind you there. Oh, yeah, well done, Nick. Well spotted. She can spot a pipe at a thousand paces. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, that's all over. <laughs> Is it a good one? Yeah. Wow. It's the hand, it's the hand with oh, the. Nice. Uh, that's, a, that's a nice example. Well, look, seeing as you gave me the uh, the thing, that's got to be. Hand it over. It's got to be yours, isn't it? <laughs> hand it over, get it? No. Oh, yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Oh, that's a lovely. It's got a little hand in it. Nice, nice bit of a uh, stem on that one. Yeah, and it's got the initials WS on ah. it. So that could be a Swinyard pipe. Yeah. Mm. Uh, he's a local maker, isn't he? Mm. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> See, I bet there's something that lives in here. Oh, that's an old. Um, it's a Roman pot. <laughs> There's a plate here, guys. I don't know if it's going to be old or modern, but you never know until you have a little look. Oh, that's... Wow, that's kind of chic, isn't it? There's like a it's... watch there as well. Who needs a metal detector, eh? Well, you wouldn't have found this anyway. Vitrified tableware. Dudson Brothers. Yeah. What do you reckon, Nick? Is that something that would suit your uh, trendy flat? No, it's hard to tell. It definitely looks like it's in the 60s, it doesn't does, it? It does, doesn't it? Might clean up all right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make a decision on that later, I think. <laughs> yeah. I, I can see a watch, though. Oh. Yeah. See if you can spot it. Um, I can see it. I can see, is it the handle poking up? Yeah. Oh, well, there we go. Oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. See if you can grab it, Nick. Oh. Very handy, waterproof watch. Oh, here we go. Nice. I feel like nugget nugget now finding yeah. watches in rivers. But well, you know what? This is like <laughs> you can just come down here and get your Christmas presents, can't you? Yeah. Oh, it's only a cheap one, Boris. We'll take that though, just so it's not in the river. Cheers. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> well, I'm doing a bit of detecting on the riverbed, and look, that's just appeared out of a. Uh, out of the mud. It's old key. I think it might be a barrel key. Look at that. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's um. I think that's for a barrel tap, maybe. Barrel tap key. Yeah, quite old. Beautiful, eh? Coin. Oh, that's a nice, nice penny. George V? No, Edward. No, George V. Probably 1930s. Oh yeah, 1930s, spot on. Well, this is nice, there's a little cuff link. I don't know if that's gold. Could be gold, could be a bit of gold plate in there. Not a lot of weight to it, so might just be cheap. Anyway, it's pretty sweet. Let's carry on. Well, this one took a bit of digging, guys, but look. How cool is that? Looks like a... Um, Grenadier, I think they're called on horseback. That's sweet, isn't it? I think Nick would like that. Oh wow, what's that? Oh, lovely. Oh, George. George the III. Oh, what's that say? Shilling? One shilling. Oh wow, that's lovely. Look at that. 
Oh, I've been detecting all sorts of copper and rubbish, and that's a lovely thing to find. Look at that, I'm gonna go and show Nick. Oh my goodness, you must have found something exciting because else you wouldn't be coming over here. Hello, it's quite exciting. Oh, oh that feels like. Oh, look! Oh my gosh! It's a nice coin, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. And we're happy, that's a uh, Georgian shilling. <gasps> that's... I don't think I've found one before. Is that a George the Second? Uh, no, I think it might be George the Third. Either way, it's a shilling, it's oh, silver. That's gorgeous. This is a forgery, which uh, I hope it isn't. Well done. I almost gave up on that signal. I was like, where the heck is this? And I just finally just grabbed a bit of spoil and it just came out. Oh, lovely. How cool is that? Big old chunky find. thing, isn't it? Lovely find. Yeah, George III. I'm not sure if there's a date on it. Uh, it's going to be on there somewhere. Yeah, I'll clean that up and let you know a date. It might be, uh, could be, it could say, actually, I think it says 1812. Oh, can I have a look? Yeah, just below there, it's got the word shilling and then 1812. Oh, wonderful. Great yeah, find. Yeah, happy days. Yeah, lovely. Haha, <laughs> silver in the bag. This looks a little bit like a crucifix. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Hmm. Oh, is that a crucifix? I think so, yeah. But it's um yeah. crucifix shape, isn't it? Godly finds here today. <laughs> I wonder if it's made of. Uh, I think it's iron. It's on the other side. Nothing. Mm. It's just a simple cross someone put on their boat, maybe. Fell off. Apparently Simon's found something. Let's see what it is. What is it? Let's have a look. Oh my gosh! That's amazing! Let's see. Ooh, that's nice. See the date on the bottom? Yes! What's that? Ava available until 31st of December 1934. Uh-huh. It's like some sort of boat license or <laughs> permit. Yeah. Well, it's actually got something around the edges as well. Oh, look, yeah. At the top. Oh, I didn't notice that. And the bottom, I think. Oh, let's give it a wash and see if we can yeah. get it. I need, I need like a scouring pad. Oh, I've got a, a brush. Let's see if my fingers will do the job first. How exciting. Where did you find that? Just over there. It was all covered. I thought it was a bit of plastic. You know, beer mat or something. <laughs> I've got a brush, I think, in my bag. <gasps> oh, look at that. Thames? Oh! Hmm. Thames Conservative, is it? Is it? Conservance, maybe? Conservance? Conservance? Oh, Conservancy. Con Conservancy, I can't say it. Conservancy. Oh. Thames Conservancy. Wow, that's really pretty. I love that. 1935. Oh my gosh, that's absolutely brilliant. What a brilliant find. Well, Nick, as, as you gave me the lantern, oh. you, you're more than welcome to take that if you want to put it on your... Are you serious? Yeah, of course. Yeah, because it's... I mean, I love it, but you love it as well, so you can have it. And it's, it's, uh, it's a swap for the lantern, because you so kindly gave that to me. Um, you can take that and put it up in your... Studio. Oh, thank you. It's awesome, isn't it? Mm. And you can do your research for for the uh, for yeah. the viewers. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
This is a boat permit issued by Thames Conservancy. It lasted for one year and the cash raised went towards the upkeep of the Thames such as the locks. Once expired the owners would skim them across the water. Well um, I just picked up this little plaque as you saw and um, it does have some lettering on it and it could possibly be a name. So I'm already jumping with excitement and um, wanting to go and research it. So that's just great. So my favourite kind of find. So I'm going to put that in my bag and later on I'll be getting on the internet to see if I can find out anything. Well, I have to clean it off first, of course, to, to, to uncover the name. But it looks like it could be something like Harry or Larry. So... Excellent. Well, that's, yeah. that's certainly intriguing. Watch this space. Can't wait. Say it like you mean it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> Nick, that's an awesome find. I can't wait to see what uh, who Harry Howe is. That's better, thank you. Hopefully, very much. hopefully thank he's not uh, Harry Howe deceased, and that's his. Uh, that's come off his um, oh. his urn. Well, he probably <laughs> is deceased, but hopefully it's not his urn. I think I think it's probably the name of a boat, Harry Howe. That's just a guess, but okay. there might be a date in the middle as well. It might say July, but that's just again. It's hard, so hard to make out exactly what it says. But a little bit of um, a little bit of a clean, and that should uh, that should reveal more. Hopefully, it's engraved and as opposed to painted and you can see what um what it says i think it is engraved excellent fine nick well found thank you very much si right on to the next one <laughs> what's it got there what is it this is a victorian fairy light but it's sadly broken it would have had a piece of wire around the top and hung from a tree at Christmas with a candle inside. As electricity was introduced, these became old fashioned and then thrown away. But now they are quite collectible. Well, the complete ones are anyway. Oh, hold on. Well I just heard a little shout over there and of course the plan was to go back to where I found that ship's lantern or light to see if we could find that other piece of um, glass to go in the other side, the red piece and I think Cy Fines has done it, he's found it! You got it! Fabulous! What about that? Well now I can say that I've at least found part of... <laughs> That's great! Oh brilliant, let me yeah, zoom well. in on that. Look at that beautiful chunk of red glass, look at that. That's the port bit. Yeah, so what was the other one? Blue or something wasn't it? Well it's, yeah it looks bluey, it's sort of turquoise. Sweet. Very nice. Well yeah I think the front of the glass is more like a, like a bay oh. type glass isn't it? So. That might be here as well, so we'll just have a little route around and see what we can find. Yep, try not to bit. disturb the, yeah, sort of the mud. Straddling the, um, straddling the area. I was going to pick out some bits, I should have my gloves on really, but I'm too excited, sorry. <laughs> okay, brilliant, well done, result. Oh no, I think it's a pint glass. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of the last of the summer wine, do you ever watch that where you just down to hold a pint of beer? <laughs> What's that? So you're trying to find the rest of the uh, lamp, are you? Yeah. What have you got there? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> a nice shoe. Oh, man. It's great, isn't it? Dear, we do love sifting around in junk, don't we? We do. But you've got to go through a bit of junk before we get a bit of treasure. Always, always. Yeah, it's not going to come out and bite you on the butt. You've got to go and uh, hunt it out. Well, thanks for watching, mud lovers. Now we do. <laughs> are you laughing? <laughs> Stop Sorry. laughing. Sorry. So thanks for watching Mud Lovers and now the clean up. Yep, so it's snowing today, so a great chance to do some upcycling and clean our finds. So it appears there's quite a lot of degradation on this. Rather than restoring it fully to a in immaculate condition. I think what I'm going to do is still keep a little bit of patina on <laughs> because 
Firstly, it's going to take a lot of work to get it anywhere near perfect again. Plus, it's not new, so why do we want it to be new? Hopefully, I can uh, repair these a bit though. This is starboard there, but it uh, seems to be crumbling away a little bit. I'll give it a nice clean. And I think I'm just going to, it's already got a nice bit of chrome there come up. It's always been bashed there. Maybe I can add a bit of chrome to it, I don't know. There's a way you can do it with using tin foil. I'm not sure if it'll work. Um, so I'm just gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna give it a good clean up first and see where we are. It's actually quite nice colors coming through, you know. Some of the polish, some of the chrome is gone. debating whether to paint it, but I don't think I will. I thought about painting it black or something, but I oh, just can't make my mind up. Once you paint it, you can't undo it very easily. And then if it's painted, it just looks like one out of the shop. No, nope, I'm leaving all this on. It's pretty cool patina. So one way I know that you can restore chrome is a very basic way. It won't be as good as the original, but it's quite good as a temporary fix. You can actually rub tin foil into the marker you want to repair. So I'm going to try it. I don't know if it will stay, but um, it has worked in the past on other pieces of chrome that I've been uh, restoring. So uh, we'll see if it works. No, that's a bit of a fail. That one didn't work, still. Worth we'll a try. Here we have the lights in pretty good condition. Shouldn't take too much to clean these up. So on some of the other lamps I've seen, this bit is clear, but it's got a couple of ridges in it. So I've just got this Coke bottle. So now I'm gonna fashion a new front light panel using an old Coke bottle. Stick it on the inside or outside. I think I might put it on the inside. Yeah, I think that looks better. I know there's a seam there where the old glass went, but I don't care. I'm I think on the inside it just looks neater, so I'll glue that in place. The only thing I'm worried about is get this getting too hot, but I'll notice it if, it'll, if it does get too hot. I use an LED light as well, so it'll keep the, keep the um, temperature down. Plenty of places with heat to go at the bottom. So you saw me stick this on earlier. It's now glued on and it's not going anywhere. So now when I shut the door, this falls down, making sure this doesn't open very easily. Still a little bit wobbly and wibbly, but it won't open freely anymore. That's that fixed. As you can see, that worked really well. Brilliant. Now it's hard to do the labels, replace these. So these obviously degraded and came off whilst cleaning it. 
So all I'm going to do here is I made some stickers that I'm going to stick on the side. Okay, it's not ideal, but I think once I get a bit of varnish on, add a little bit more to it with the patina, this should pretty much look the part. So now the bit I've been looking forward to, fixing the port side light to there. This is a case of gluing that on. Hopefully the glue will be strong enough to keep it on there. But I'm going to apply glue on the inside as well. It's epoxy resin, so it's really strong stuff. Let's give it a go. It's a nice case of wiring some electrics to it. Drill a little hole there, I that's the best place for it, it can be hidden. And that's gonna come down underneath. And that is gonna be screwed in. It's just a case of wiring it up. And turning it on. But I'll wait until it gets dark to get the full effect. So the next job is to give this lovely old shilling a clean up and find out if it's real or photo forgery. Maybe it's copper, could be tin. It's unlikely it's tin. So we'll just give it a zap electrolysis and uh, see what's underneath it. So this is my rudimentary electrolysis kit. There's Tupperware with warm water in. And this is the actual electrolysis machine, which is basically just an old phone charger. Um, one, the negative goes to a stainless steel spoon and the positive goes to a crocodile clip that you then have to make nice and secure. You add a little bit of table salt to the water, maybe like a couple of teaspoons worth, mix that up. They do do kits like this on eBay, which if you're not confident of uh, using anything in your house then I'll just get a kit it just saves time and effort you know and it comes with all the crocodile clips already plug this in and you can see as soon as I actually put this in the water it starts to create a charge between the two and fizzes up and what we do we add our coin to that there's a couple of ways of doing it you can either just grab straight onto it like that you can actually put foil over it, which I may do on this occasion, just to protect it a little bit. Um, or you can just literally just touch it next to it like that and hold it in. Um, it doesn't hurt, it's not a high voltage. Um, but doing that means you're not going to damage it necessarily um, by using the little teeth on the crocodile clip. And here, here we go, it's going. And you can take it out and just turn it around ever so slightly. Because if you leave it in there for too long, it can get a bit of burn on one side. So with anything valuable, you just really want to keep an eye on it because you don't want to overdo it. If you think about starting this, try it on just some old knackered coins or artifacts or just a piece of random copper, brass or silver if you've got it. 
Silver cleans up very well using this process. The more crud on it, the longer it will take. So I think that might be all right with the crocodile clip on it. So I'm just gonna gently put that on. Again, this coin isn't overly valuable, plus it's quite, it's been in the wars a bit anyway, so, but just don't do it to anything really valuable. See the water's already turning a bit of a green color. That's nicely uh, fizzing away there. So we'll come back a bit later on. But halfway through the process, I'm gonna use this pen, which is a fiberglass pen. It's what a lot of experts use to clean off any crud for coins so they can get a closer view of what it is. And these are very cheap. So what I'll do, I'm just gonna move it around a bit. The best bit is um, using the fiberglass pen because it does literally, it's like having a little scratch card. And you take away the mark and leave behind, hopefully, a silver coin. It's worth changing the water as well. It gives a slightly faster reaction and you can see what you're doing because it will just get too dark or black to see what state the coin's in. Right, you see how dark that water's turned out. It's probably going to take quite a bit more for it to become fully clean. But what I'm going to do now is going to wash the coin in some fresh water. Okay, look how green that water is. So, uh, done quite a bit. So now I'm going to use the fiberglass pen. See what detail we can, see what other quarter we can remove. Just, it helps to get a little bit wet as well. Right, this is my favourite bit, you ready? Start on the outside actually, I think. Gravy. It doesn't look like silver. It looks copper. It might be a forgery. Still. Pretty cool coin anyway, still still the right age. Probably was quite a big bend in it. Maybe someone decided that um, they were going to test it and it bent. But then again, silver would bend, so I'm not sure if that was really a conclusive test or not. But then it might explain why it's ended up in the river. Someone's trying to pass off a coins of forgery. Maybe in the pub. Someone just launched it into the river in around 1816. There we go. Really good forgery if it is. I suppose why would you forge pennies when you can forge a shilling? But forgery was rife, always has been since Roman times. Roman coins were forged. And every coin in between, people have tried to make them out of tin and lead, obviously a lot cheaper metals. Right, let's try the other side. Really thick crud on there. So I believe this was definitely down there for just over 200 years. We'll do a silver test in a minute as well. It'll probably need to go in again into the uh, let try this this kit because there's only so much this little brush can do. It's doing a good job, but might as well let the electrolysis kit do as much as it can. It could just be stained, it could be stained silver. If it's a low quality silver. Nice though, nice coin. I'll tell you what, it doesn't look like it's it does look genuine. The detail on it is fabulous. You know, if, a for, if it was a forgery, 
this side's a little bit worn, but I reckon we'll get some more detail out of that. Let me keep on um, cleaning and I'll come back to you when it's finished. And I'll let you know whether it's silver or whether I think it's a forgery. Or let me have your opinion. There you go, it's pretty clean. A few last bits to get off, but I just want to do a quick silver test. I'll do it on this side at the bottom there. Um, I'm pretty sure it's copper and a forgery, which is quite interesting. So I'll just do a quick silver acid test. Let's get that area really nice and clean where I'm going to do the test. Um, what I'm going to do is put a very small amount of solution on it. If it turns black or grey, then it's the base metal. And if it stays clear, then it's silver. Let's give that a good rub. It does look copper, in my opinion, but we'll find out in a sec. So that area is really nice and clean. I'm going to put a little bit more patina back on. But this is the stuff, sulfuric acid, very weak solution, but enough to tell you if it's the real deal or not. Put a tiny little blob on. Oh, too much. <laughs> but you can see it's going black straight away. Which means it is copper. Never mind. It's actually more interesting to find a forgery because uh, this has actually been made in some, you know, somebody's basement or whatever back in the Georgian times. It's quite clever engineering to be able to fake coins at that, you know, back then. So, you know, all power to them. But this is a bank token, three shillings. This wasn't actually... Um, it is legal currency, but it's a token. So people will probably, it's probably easy to forge. You might have had less consequences had you got caught. If you got caught forging real coins, coins that are classed as everyday currency, then you probably get death sentence. But as this is a token, the risk was slightly less. Now imagine who made that. So what I'm going to do is just very lightly go over it with a bit of acrylic paint just so that um, it brings out a little bit of detail. So all we do is just literally stroke it over the top like that, then rub it in and rub it out again. And that just gives a, a little bit of depth to the pattern and so it gives a little bit of the shine off. It just gets basically a bit, a bit of like pretend dirt back into the edges and you can make out a little bit more of that lovely detail. Gives you a bit of an aged look as well. And you can just add as much as you want on, rub it in. Rather than looking shiny because it won't the shine won't last. Plus it's a ever so slightly um coppery looking. So we had a bit of black to it just to tone it back and you can see there that it's working quite nicely. I'll try this side as well. It's always reversible with stuff as well, so. And as you rub it into the, um, to the grooves, it doesn't go in the highlights. So the, the top end is left, uh, top edges are left bright, if that makes any sense. But there's loads of different ways you can add a bit of, bit of depth to these coins. This is my personal favourite. See so how that's actually looking a lot, well to me it's looking, um, you can see more detail in it now. Then you can always finish it off with a bit of renaissance wax. That's pretty nice. You probably can't see a difference but I can. <laughs> Build up the layers slowly and then rub it off. And it looks more like a real worn coin as opposed to a shiny piece of metal. And just go in different areas and add a bit and you can take it off and 
put it on so it gets a more gruntier feel about it like it's actually been through greasy palms in a pub and clearly make that date out now These bank tokens were minted during the Napoleonic Wars when the Royal Mint was not producing crown coinage but rather pieces issued under the authority of the Bank of England. Therefore it's technically a token, although its purity of metal caused it to be accepted as money. When I showed my mate Cuffs he told me that the forgeries of this type of coin are very common and the speculation was that the Mint was creating these forgeries because there was a shortage of silver due to those wars. The dyes are far too good and accurate to be forged. Either that or the dyes were stolen, which seems unlikely and unproven. If you enjoy forgeries, you can hear about invasion tokens in my previous video. Now this is a really cool find. Imagine you have a barrel of booze and you wanted to give your crew a daily ration. Then you'd have used this key to turn the tap that then let out the contents. That way you can leave the barrel unattended and be sure no one can help themselves to a tipple. It dates to the 17 to 1800s. Now I'm off for a well-earned drink myself. Thanks for watching, mud lovers, and catch you on the next mud venture.